An unconscious 48-year-old woman is admitted to the hospital. CT scan reveals a tumor in her brain. When she regains consciousness, her right eye is directed laterally and downward with complete ptosis of her upper eyelid and her pupil is dilated. Which of the following structures was most likely affected by the tumor to result in these symptoms? First of all, let's remember the extraocular muscles that are involved in the movement of the eyeball. We have four recti muscles, the superior rectus, the lateral rectus, of course there is the medial rectus on the other side here, and there is the inferior rectus muscle, and then we have two obliques, a superior oblique muscle here and an inferior oblique muscle below. The other muscle that is shown here most superficially is levator palpebri superioris, and as its name indicates, it does not move the eyeball, but it's palpebri, it's attached to the upper lid, and it elevates the upper eyelid. These muscles, the seven muscles, they are supplied by three cranial nerves. The lateral rectus is supplied by the abducent nerve, and the superior oblique is supplied by the trochlear nerve, while the remaining five muscles are supplied by the oculomotor nerve, the third cranial nerve. The oculomotor nerve supplies the inferior rectus, supplies the inferior oblique, superior rectus, and levator palpebri superioris and the medial rectus muscle. Now let's read the stem again. When she regains consciousness, her right eye is directed laterally. It means that the lateral rectus muscle is functioning. And lateral rectus muscle is supplied by the abducent nerve. So the abducent nerve is not affected and downward. Downward movement of the eyeball is either produced by superior oblique or by the inferior rectus muscle. Superior oblique muscle is supplied by the trochlear nerve and the inferior rectus is supplied by the oculomotor nerve. So there is still a possibility that any one of them is affected. However, when the superior oblique muscle is affected by injury to the trochlear nerve, then the eye will be directed downwards and medially by the action of the inferior rectus muscle, which is supplied by the oculomotor nerve. This is not the case here. But in addition to that, let's look at another clue, which is given in the stem, that is ptosis of the upper eyelid and the pupil is dilated. Pupillary dilatation is produced by dilator pupillary muscle, and this is supplied by sympathetic fibers and opposed by the sphincter pupillary muscle which is supplied by parasympathetic fibers. This indicates that the parasympathetic innervation of the sphincter pupillary is affected. These parasympathetic fibers are carried by the oculomotor nerve, although they do not originate from the motor nucleus of the oculomotor nerve, but they originate from the nearby nucleus, nucleus of Edinger-Westphal. But the fibers, the Preganglionic fibers, parasympathetic fibers, are carried by the oculomotor nerve and might be damaged when the oculomotor nerve itself is damaged. In addition, there is ptosis of the upper eyelid. As we mentioned earlier, the upper eyelid is elevated by levator palpebri superioris, which is also supplied by the oculomotor nerve. So when there is oculomotor nerve damage, this results in ptosis and pupillary dilatation. Ptosis is because of the levator palpebri superioris muscle supplied by the oculomotor nerve and pupillary dilatation is because of the damage of the parasympathetic fibers that supply the dilator pupillary muscle and relay in the ciliary ganglion. So the scenario goes better with the oculomotor nerve damage. However, let's verify the other options. Optic nerve Damage of the optic nerve. The optic nerve is the second cranial nerve. Here is the optic nerve here, and it is a pure sensory nerve. It receives from the retina. It doesn't supply the extraocular muscles. Facial nerve. Damage of the facial nerve. The facial nerve has nothing to do with the extraocular muscles. It only supplies the muscle of the, of the lid, orbicularis oculi muscle, but has nothing to do with the eyeball. Ciliary ganglion, damage of the ciliary ganglion could result in dilated pupil, 
because of damage of the parasympathetic fibers, postganglionic parasympathetic fibers that supply the dilator pupillae muscle, but it does not result in the other motor effects. Damage of the superior cervical ganglion results in denervation of the sympathetic supply of the eyeball, and so it will result in denervation of the dilator pupillae muscle and results in meiosis or constricted pupil. It might also result in slight ptosis because these sympathetic fibers that are derived from the superior cervical ganglion also supply a smooth muscle part of levator palpebris superioris here and this damage of this smooth muscle part which is called Muller's muscle might result in ptosis. So in case of superior cervical ganglion damage, the damage of the sympathetic innervation results in partial ptosis plus constricted pupil and not dilated pupil. Let's review again the function of the extraocular muscles. This is the case of the lady. Her right eye is directed laterally and downward and there is ptosis here. That's why it, the upper eyelid is pushed upwards by the finger and if you look at the pupil, the pupil is dilated. So this is a typical clinical picture of a patient with oculomotor nerve injury or oculomotor nerve palsy. The reason for the deviation of the eyeball is that the lateral rectus is laterally deviating the eyeball and it is supplied by the abducent nerve and causes abduction of the eyeball. The superior oblique muscle, which is supplied by the trochlear nerve, which is still intact, causes the eyeball to go downwards and laterally, while the inferior rectus muscle, which is supplied by the oculomotor nerve, causes the eyeball to go downwards and medially. These are the direction of pull of the other muscles that are supplied by the oculomotor nerve. Inferior oblique moves the eyeball upwards and laterally, superior rectus upwards and medially, inferior rectus, as I mentioned, pulls the eyeball downward and medially, and the medial rectus causes adduction. So these muscles are not working here, and therefore there are two remaining muscles only working because they are supplied by other cranial nerves apart from the oculomotor nerve, lateral rectus supplied by the abducent, and the superior oblique supplied by the trochlear nerve. Adding to that is the ptosis because of the denervation of levator palpebris superioris and the dilated pupil because of the sympathetic overflow resulting from denervation of sphincter pupillae muscle which is supplied by parasympathetic fibers that are carried with the oculomotor nerve from the Edinger-Westphal nucleus located in the midbrain.